Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see about the class based component modeling. So now we all know that what is a component and now this component how it is going to be built on a class based model. So here let us see first of all what are all the component level design principles. So here we have few principles over here the first one is open closed principle what does it mean is a module or component should be open for extension but closed for modification actually what does it mean is once the module or component is developed it should be open for extension means other modules can use this module but closed for modification means this particular model should be well established there should not be further changes inside the module that is the concept of open for extension and closed for modification next one is lisco substitution principle subclasses should be substitutable for their base classes that means suppose if we are going to derive the classes from one another that is the basic concept of inheritance once we start inheriting classes from the subclasses there should be a possibility that the subclasses can also become a base class that means you can keep on deriving classes after classes next one is the dependency inversion principle here it depends upon the abstractions and do not depends upon the concretions here the component depends upon the other well, actually when the component depends on the other concrete components rather than interfaces the more difficult it is to be extended actually what does it mean is if the component is depending on the abstraction it will be very easy to expand it is easy to develop the further components or the interfaces but if it is depending on the concretion then it will be difficult to expand next is the interface segregation principle many client specific interfaces are better than the one general purpose interface suppose here we are developing a problem domain specifically a problem domain solution so in that case there should be a client specific interfaces what the client requires we should develop an interfaces in such a way that what is the reality or the necessity of the particular problem domain what interface is needed instead of just generating a general purpose interface this general purpose interface will not be helpful and it is not relevant so that we cannot develop a complete software for a server class specialized interfaces should be created to several to serve the major categories of the clients only those operations that are relevant to a particular category of client should be specified in the interface that means we have to define the interface in such a way that you know that interface helps to include many components now these interfaces should be problem specific or a domain specific or the client specific it should not be a general purpose interface next one is release reuse equivalency principle the granularity of reuse is the granularity of the release that means it group the reusable classes into packages that can be managed upgraded and controlled as new versions are created so here once you develop your version of the software here we always expect the reuse of the components okay so what you have to do is once you develop the software whether on any base now you are using the class based module okay so when you are using the class based modules group the reusable classes into packages that means the packages are the collection of classes so you put into all the classes under one package which can be reusable so that we can extend the package we can manage we can upgrade and also we can control the classes when you are grouping those reusable classes in a package whenever you start creating new versions of the software these packages can be imported and they help to manage and upgrade the software being developed next one is common closure principle classes that change together belong together that means it is the closure property whatever the components that should be inside the class what does the class contains and those components should should be bound inside the class in such a way that when it is changed it is changed at a stretch that means suppose uh, we know that 
a class consists of an data and the methods members and the methods suppose if you are changing one particular function it the change should happen as a class so that is the concept of the common closure principle classes should be packaged cohesively they should address the same functional or the behavioral area on the assumption that if one class experiences a change then all they all will experience experience a change here yeah, that means here yeah, the classes should be developed in such a way that it represent one specified function or a behavior next one is common reuse principle classes that aren't reused together should not be grouped together so this is the this is the controversy of the uh, previous principle this is the common reuse principle is the classes that aren't used together should not be grouped together so it is the it is the other way of telling the previous principle so when you, are, you have to put the classes together which are of same nature so don't put the or the group the classes which are not reused together and then classes that are grouped together may go through unnecessary integration and testing when they have experienced no changes but when the other classes in the package have been upgraded so when you want to make the changes so you should be grouped together in such a way that the classes which aren't reused together that means if you are going to reuse the classes you use group those classes inside a particular package don't collect the reused classes that means so the group the classes in such a way that they are of the same nature so collect only the reusable classes together that is the summary of this point so always collect the reusable classes together as a package so why because if you collect the classes of or the components of different different nature what will happen is when the classes are upgraded when the packages are upgraded so naturally this unnecessary integration what it will happen is the the classes which are of this nature which are grouped together they may go through unnecessary integration that means they go unwanted changes inside the functionalities so always group the classes of same nature whether it has to be reused or not and now let us see about the component level guidelines there are some guidelines in order to develop the component in the we are developing the software in a component level so the guidelines are establish the naming convention for the components that are specified as a part of the architectural model and then refine and elaborated as part of the component level model so here naming convention is very important because names is the mean by which we can address anything so the naming should be properly given so then only the addressing can be successfully done obtain architectural component names from the problem domain and ensure that they have meaning to all stakeholders who view the architectural model so here the name should be meaningful and should be easily understandable by the customer so the component name should reflect the problem domain next one is use the infrastructure component names that reflect their implementation specific meaning so when you are using the actually we have different components when you are using the infrastructure components you have to give the proper name such as uh, example given as a stack so this particular component is going to use the stack as the implementation uh, data structure and, and next about the dependencies and the inheritance in the uml so uml is the unified modeling language that helps to develop the uh, that's the actually it's a tool to just to specify the model of a component model any dependencies from left to right and inheritance from top to bottom actually what does it mean is when you are going to develop a component we have to make the dependency in such a way that it has start from the left to the right that means the right component takes some dependency or it is dependent to the left side component so this hierarchy should go in the left to right fashion and also when you are using the inheritance you should go from the top to the bottom because top is the base class and bottom is the derived class so this will go level by level when we are creating more and more subclasses of the derived classes 
Consider modeling any component dependencies as interfaces rather than representing them as a direct component to component dependency. So instead of making as a dependency between the component, make it as a dependency between the interface. Why? Because interface consists of the collection of the functionalities. So many methods are grouped in the interface. So better make the dependency as interface and not as the component. Now let us see about the cohesion. So when you talk about the component, so here it is then class based component we are using the cohesion. So cohesion is the single mindedness of a component. Actually what does it mean is a component should have a well defined functionality. One function, one component. A component should not mix multiple functionalities. Because one particular advantage is that suppose if any other module want to use this particular component based upon this single mindedness or the single functionality this component can be reused anywhere it is necessary. It implies that a component or a class encapsulates only attributes and operations that are closely related to one another and to the class or the component itself. The objective is to keep cohesion as as high as possible so always we the good quality software is the cohesion is high and the coupling is low that is the cohesion is is the intra in intra level of the component and coupling is between the inter components the kinds of cohesion that can be ranked in order from the best to the worst that is from highest to the lowest are as follows first one is the functional cohesion what is functional cohesion is one module performs one particular function that is the concept of functional cohesion and layer a high layer component accesses the services of a low layer component so the the flow should flow from the top to the bottom level layer by layer that means each layer has one component which has a good functionality of its own Next one is communicational. All the operations that access the same data are defined within one class. So here, suppose the data has to be accessed through some communication. Okay, so all the data, for example, you have a database and many functions or methods is going to access the particular data from the database means we can put all those statements or all those components or all those functions in a single module or a component that is the communicational that means this particular component communicate and access the same data defined for one particular class next one is sequential components or operations are grouped in a manner in such a way that the first it allows the first to provide the input to the next and so on in order to implement the sequence of operations. So, this will give some clarity of the operations. So, one operation provides input to the next operation and next to the next and so on in the, con in the sequence. That is the concept of sequential cohesion. And then procedural components or operations are grouped in a manner that allows one to be invoked immediately after the preceding one was invoked even when no data passed between them. So this is all about the um, subprograms or the functions okay so here this procedures every component should have a proper procedure and even though they do not pass the data between them the procedures or the common operations are grouped in one particular module that is the procedural cohesion then temporal operations are grouped to perform a specific behavior or establish a certain state such as a program startup or when the error is detected. this is based upon the time based suppose a program starts it wanted to give a message or a program come across some error it want to convey some message so those things are put as, as a single component that is called as a temporal cohesion this is based upon the timing of the other situation next one is utility the components the classes or the operations are grouped in such a way that the same within the same category because of the similar general functions but are otherwise unrelated to each other it means the statements or the operation should be grouped in a component in such a way that they all do the 
similar general functions next is the coupling so cohesion is all about the functionalities that happens inside a module within a component now now this coupling is all about the things that happens between the models so we know that a software is developed by the divide and conquer technology so once you start the process building we have thousands of modules and those modules may interact with each other in different ways and each module's capacity or the quality is defined in the previous slides which is all about the cohesion now we will talk about the coupling what is coupling is the interaction or the collaboration between the components so based upon how the components can interact with each other we have the concept of coupling so here as the amount of communication and collaboration increases between the operations and classes the complexity of the computer based system also increases so when you have the communication lines are more the complexity of the system also is more because suppose there are 100 modules the communication is to some level if there are 1000 modules the communications goes in a higher level if there are only 5 modules the communication is less because as the number of components is more and more the communication links also become higher and higher in the exponential manner so as the communication goes uh, the complexity also increases so as the complexity increases there is a difficulty in implementation testing and maintaining the software also increases then coupling is a qualitative measure of degree to which the operations and the classes are connected to one another so how the components can to go together suppose module a and module b has some communication or some logic to go together that they all couple together suppose if module a and d has no connection they need not couple together in order to make the communication so likewise the dependent components which are really dependent on one another based on some methods or operations only they can couple and go together that is called as an is a qualitative measure which helps to go the modules together the objective is to keep the coupling as low as possible so here the coupling should be minimized that means the communication among the modules should be minimized naturally the complexity or the the number of communication path will be reduced and naturally the complexity will be reduced let us see the few types of uh, cup, coupling one is the first one is the data coupling so this coupling happens when two different modules access some common data so operation a passes one or more atomic data and operation to operations b now they have to go together that is called as a data coupling so the coupling happens based upon the data it is going to operate next one is stamp coupling a whole data structure or a class instantiation is passed as a parameter to an operation so here it is a stamp in the sense the data structure itself is going to be passed between the modules that is the stamp coupling and then control coupling is the control signal is going to pass between the two different modules operation a invokes operation b and operation b passes a control flag back to a and so on so that can be done in a control coupling next one is common coupling when the different components share a common variable like a global variable naturally these components has to go together that is called as a common coupling and what is content coupling is one component secretly modifies the data that is stored internally in the another component so based upon some operation or a function call one component makes some call to the other component to change its data secretly that is called as a content coupling that means one component can change the content of the other component next one is subroutine call coupling when one operation is invoked it invokes another operation within side of it that means a particular component has one subroutine call and that subroutine will will be available in the next component so this module a calls a subroutine from module b in that way the coupling takes place that is called as a subroutine call coupling and what is the 
type use coupling is component a uses a data type defined in component b such as for an instance variable or a local variable declaration so here component a may use some data type which is defined in the component b in that case also coupling may happen if when the type definition changes every component that declares a variable must also change inclusion or import coupling is component a imports or includes the contents of the component b like when you are having a packages to import one package to the other package so it is importing all the contents of the other component that is called as an inclusion or the import coupling an external coupling is a component communicates or collaborates with the infrastructure components that are entities external to the software like operating system functions database functions networking functions these are all beyond the that means they are they are all the outside the software so that is called as an external coupling actually what does it mean is some network some bring data to one module and that ha data has to be fetched based upon some uh, protocols and that data will be passed to some other uh, component in that way the external coupling occurs so these are all the different types of cohesion and coupling where a module has and